All right, let's get started with the exam solutions for winter 2012, exam two. So this, pers this first page is just taking you through the steps of a hypothesis test. So <laughs> the question is, so a researcher investigating changing trends in marriage wants to determine if the average age of first marriage is higher for men than for women. So he takes a random sample of 30 married um, heterosexual couples and he records the ages for the man and woman for each couple. So the first part, part A, is just what's the null and alternative hypothesis? And it also asks you to complete the definition of the corresponding parameter. So <laughs> first things first, since the male and female ages are <laughs> matched by couple or paired, we are dealing with a paired t-test. So as with all paired t-tests, your null hypothesis is that mu d equals zero. And since in this question, the researcher wants to determine if the age of first marriage is higher for men than for women, and differences is defined as male age minus female age, your mu d is the alternative hypothesis is that mu d is greater than zero. Where the parameter represents the population mean difference in age at first marriage. And be sure to define the difference, so m minus f for all couples. Make sure you include the all because it's referencing the population mean difference. All right, so next, B, use SPSS output to complete the statement by filling in the blank and circling the appropriate word. So the statement is, the observed sample mean difference in ages is blank standard errors above or below the hypothesized population mean difference in ages. All right, so this statement is just an interpretation of your test statistic, T. So you go under T and you fill in that the observed sample mean difference in ages is 2.37 standard errors. And since it's positive, you want to circle above the hypothesized population mean difference in ages. All right, so for part C, if there really is no difference in the average age of first marriage for men and women in the population of all such couples, what's the expected value of the test statistic? So if there really is no difference and the null is true, then the mean for your null t distribution is just zero. So the mean or expected value would be zero. All right, so D, provide a complete sketch of the p-value, include a label and values on the x-axis, a full label for the distribution, a shaded area for the p-value, and the actual value of the p-value, so the whole shebang. All right, so your null distribution, since we're doing a paired sample t-test, is the t-distribution, and for t-distribution, your degrees of freedom are n minus one. So you want to write t parentheses 29, so 30 minus one. And as I said before, for your null distribution, the expected value or the mean is zero. All right, and then you want to make sure that you label your x-axis as t test statistics, so t values. <laughs> All right, so 
Then you want to include your test statistic value, which we got, so it's 2.37. So you can just add that on the x-axis, 2.37. And then finally, since your mu d, since your alternative hypothesis is that mu d is greater than zero, you want to shade the area to the right. And just label it as p-value. All right, so that completes your picture. So the way you find out your actual p-value is, again, you refer to SPSS. And the p-value that SPSS points out is 0 0.024. But since our alternative is only one-sided, and SPSS always gives you a p-value for a two-sided test, your final step is to divide that p-value by 2. And so you should get 0 0.012 as your final answer for p-value. All right, so E, circle the appropriate statistical decision. So in part A, they state that the researcher has decided to use a 5% significance level. We're checking if your p-value is less than 0 0.05. And since 0 0.012 is less than 0 0.05, you want to reject H0, since you reject if the p-value is smaller. And then finally, um, the last question asks what type, of er what type of error the researcher could have made. Um, so, and the choices are type 1, type 2, or can't be determined. All right, <clears throat> so since, um, sorry, going back to E, since we decided to reject H0, um, type 1 error is the probability of, or type 1 error is the error of rejecting H0 when H0 is actually true, and type 2 is the error of failing to reject H0 when HA is actually true. So since in this question we are rejecting H0, the only error you can make is the error of incorrectly rejecting H0, which is the type 1 error.